You might know that I'm a lover of social networks, Twitter, Google+, Facebook. But uh, you know, when there's a news story that happens, how do you keep all that in one place? Or if you're into something like music or fashion or even cats, how do you keep all that into one place and share that just that with your friends in a proper way? It's really hard to do on uh, these social networks. And Snippet has an answer that's really unique and a lot of fun. Who are you? So I, uh, Rami Adib, uh, I'm founder of Snippet, a social curation uh, site. And uh, I uh, previously have been a programmer most of my life, spent seven years at Tell Me Networks, um, and a couple of years as a venture uh, at Coastal Ventures before starting Snippet. Very cool. So you, did you work with Mike McHugh? I worked for McHugh for seven years. Yeah, okay, so he started Flipboard, and, I, and now I sort of understand this content curation play, because you're doing something similar to Flipboard, but very different. It is similar and it's very different. Okay. Um, it is very different in that it's about you collecting what matters to you most and expressing yourself to the world through what interests you. Um, it is similar in that at the same time you can use Snippet to browse and that it's, it's also a beautiful site. Yeah. McHugh has taught me the importance of design and of focusing on the product and the consumer. Yeah. And it, Flipboard is used for reading the social streams. In fact, my dad doesn't even know he's reading social streams. He, it just looks like a magazine to him, and he's flipping through it, and he doesn't even like or retweet things. Me, on the other hand, I'm reading Facebook or Twitter or Google+, and I'm really curating the hell out of it. I'm adding my thoughts to it. I'm retweeting it. I'm favoriting it and, and doing it many, many times a day. Where do you guys come in? What, what do you let me do that, that I can't already do with Flipboard or Facebook or Twitter? Well, I'll tell you, uh, maybe to best understand where we come in to understand why we started Snippet. So back in March of last year, I was uh, working at Coastal Ventures, and I'm originally Egyptian. And there was a small revolution back in Egypt, and all my friends reached out to me and said, like, Rami, what's happening in Egypt? And I was constantly consuming content. I was constantly reading. I knew where the best articles were, where the best videos were, and I wanted to share these. So I turned to Facebook and to Twitter. I would share something on Facebook, and within three hours, it just disappears from everyone's feed. Yeah. And I would look at Twitter, and I would share something, but there was two challenges. The first, all my Twitter followers were VCs and, and entrepreneurs. Yeah. So for me to be like, Arab Spring, Arab Spring, it was not what they were there for. Yeah. I couldn't have multifaceted interests expressed in any of these social media platforms without them getting totally lost. Yeah. The second challenge was Twitter's. Well, let's just stop there because my friend Buzz Bregeman uh, is the CEO of a software company, and he would write about politics once in a while. And his uh, his followers on his blog would sa would start commenting, "Will you stop talking about politics? I hate your politics. I love your product." <laughs> no, precisely. And so I was like, you know what? What I need is a multifaceted way to curate. Now, let me take a step back. If you're writing a blog, if you're creating your own content, the blogging, the tumblers of the world, where you just have one stream, makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. really hard to have a blog where you're constantly creating content about so many different things. It's just not a very common use case. But over the past four years, one thing has changed. 1% of the population blogs, that was the number maybe back in 2000. It's probably the number in 2010, maybe a little bit more. 1% yeah. of internet users. But the number of people sharing links is now 60 to 70% of Facebook users, which is 60 70% of the population. Now, three years ago, people were not sharing links on Facebook. Today, 60 to 70% of people in the internet are sharing links. Yeah, or now, they're at least linking, liking things. And people don't even know now that when you like something, you really are sharing that, that like with your follower, with your friends. And on Facebook now, I'm seeing, you know, Rami liked this article by TechCrunch or whatever, right? Yeah, there is a lot of, yeah, oversharing that is happening in the world. In, and at Snippet, what we took a step back and said, look, I'm constantly consuming content. I'm not interested in the social readers. There's all these social readers that are going super viral, you know, because you read something, and then immediately it goes in your wall that you read it, and then everybody else click on it, and then you have these amazing hockey stick numbers that crash because you're not actually interested in the product. And also, um, we're interested in controlling our own brand. And if everything I read is going to be published to the world, that is probably not the level of, 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 of self-expression that I care about. Instead, I read things I like, I read things I don't like. 
Yeah. And the things that I like, I want to share it, and I want to add my thought to it. And I want to do that in a permanent and a self-expressive manner. And that's what Snippet is about. Okay. Snippet lets you collect the best of the web articles. Sometimes people use it for videos as well. Uh, but it's primarily about content, about and real photos. articles. I see photos on it. And, and photos, but people, people use a photo. Uh, they extract the photo from the article. Okay. So it's like the picture in the New York Times that's associated with the article. But, nobody, but you don't really, you're not really after the picture is not the end destination. The right. end destination is the, piece of, is the article itself or the content itself. And you put it in a collection. You add your thoughts to it. And then others can subscribe to a collection. Now, one of the pr probably most fundamental difference between Snippet and other products is A, emphasis on collecting articles. And B, you don't follow people. Yeah. See, all of these social media sites, you get all these emails. This person followed you. This person followed you. You know, I get 15 people following me on a food curation site. Yep. But any of them knows that I don't cook. But I know what happens. You sign up for the site, they take your Facebook graph, they email everybody, and assuming that those pyramid schemes work. On Snippet, you have to follow one of my collections, one or more of my collections. You may be interested in my thoughts on entrepreneurship. You may be interested in my thoughts on Egypt. You may be interested in my thoughts on San Francisco food scene. You pick which ones you care about. And this does two things. You get a more curated feed. Yep. And I know who really cares about what. I know that you actually genuinely was following me because you care about my thoughts on entrepreneurship, not just because you're mm. my friend on Facebook. Now, this is really interesting. I, and this is where I was hoping Google Plus was going to go because Google is really good at searching, right? So if I want to find food experts, they're pretty good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Amazingly yeah. so, you know? But they don't have a stream where I can just say, just show me food, you know, just show me music, or just show me uh, you know, technology. And, and Snippet, we have all these channels. Anybody can join these channels, and they're yeah. open. And you can find the, all the content of the channel and the best people within each channel. Yeah. Can I do this on an iPad, or do I have to do it on the web browser? Um, you can do it on an iPad as well. Uh, we, we build a site. It's HTML5, renders really well on the iPad, and also on the iPhone starting probably by the time the show airs. will also be available on the iPhone and as mobile web. It's not mm -hmm. an iPhone app. OK. And uh, I can curate on the iPad? I can grab a site and curate it on Absolutely. the Absolutely. So there's a bookmarklet, but we also have a magic URL. Yeah. Anytime you're on any web browser, you type snip.it slash before the link, you can snip it. Very cool. You can also snip it with a bookmarklet. You can snip it by email, or you can copy the link and come to our website. Very cool. And we're going to have an envelope where you can snip it by mail soon. This is cool. So when you so let's say you're on a on a CNN page or something. There's a story you care about. You you grab that page. What what can you do to it that is unique and not like Pinterest or not like uh, well, there's Clipboard. There's a, a bunch of different companies who are trying to bookmark the web, right? Yeah. So it. Pinterest has done an amazing job with images, and really with the verticals that are image-centric, fashion, home and garden, and, uh, and, and, and sort of food. Uh, but with, with, that's because on Pinterest, you will pin an image from the site. Yeah. On Snippet, okay, you're writing your article about the full URL. You're, you're writing your commentary about the full URL. Uh, and you can choose one of the images to be associated with it, just like a bookmarking, just like a thumbnail image to go with it. Or you can say, I don't care an image. Yeah. Um, so the key difference is uh, you can snip something that doesn't even have an image, or the image is really secondary. Uh, and second, you have to write your thoughts on the article. Yeah. So you're not asking you to describe the image. Okay? We already have the title from the page and the image shaded with the page. We're asking you to write your thoughts on that particular piece of content, because we are a platform for you to express your thoughts on things, yep. not to describe. And what do you do with that? So let, let, when I grab a news article from CNN and I say, hey, this is something everybody should pay attention to. This is a travesty, you know, yeah. whatever you're going to say, right? And you push it out to your board. You can decide what board to go to or what, what do you call these? We things? call them collections. Collections. What but you know, I, yeah, it's, it's a, um, you, you, pick what, you pick one of your existing collections or put it in a new collection and it just goes there, just one click and it's there. You can share it on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and then we have really good stats. So you don't have to go to like Bitly and like Bitly short link. You can just share with Snippet, and we will tell you all the stats you want by Snip, by collection overall, trending over time, by country, by URL. So you get all the full slew of, of stats to see how people are engaging with your content. Now, can we have shared collections? Because I know you have an e Egypt collection. Uh, maybe I see a really cool article for Egypt that I think belongs on your collection. Do you have have public collections and then private collections? Because you might not want me to push stuff on your collection, right? So we're adding a suggest feature. Okay. Okay. 
you know, I have, um, I've learned, uh, when we started the product, we used to have, we called it group curation, yeah. where multiple people can collect at the same thing. We actually built that. It's really easy, you know, just add a permission state. Like, back end is really easy, and we're engineers, so we're like, why not try it? What we found is, it really took off for families collecting apartments and furniture from Craigslist. Yeah. It was like, there is a real need. By the way, if any entrepreneurs out there, real need for you is like group curation around like buying a house or buying a car or like buying your wedding appliances. Because families are working. Uh, most people browse up actually at work. Yep. And then they are not, they want to communicate with one another. So here, the problem is that's not the product we're trying to build. Yeah. I'm not trying to build an Evernote or a group Evernote. That space exists. Um, and you don't want to build a houseboat. Um, that's actually one thing that McHugh always uh, I've heard him me. talk about that. Yes. Too. You don't want to Explain what a houseboat is, because so, I, I know what you mean. Well, I don't know if you've, if you've ever been to the, um, just go to any marina, maybe, maybe that one up in Sausalito, and you will find houseboats. They're kind of boats where people live. Um, and there's not that many people who do that, because most of the time, a boat is a boat and a house is a house. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he told me uh, a houseboat is neither a good boat nor a good house. That's precisely, <laughs> that's precisely right. A houseboat is neither a good boat nor a good house. And a site that's both for self-expression and for you to collect with your you know, significant others' private, com private, um, private things doesn't really work. And to be honest, that is one concern I have with many of the, of the products being introduced. Like Google Plus has some amazing features, but sometimes you wonder if bundling all these things together yeah. is good or bad. Yeah, it's, it's dissatisfying at some level and it causes a lot of noise. And that's why I've, I'm keying in on these, these graphs now that they need noise protection. Facebook has noise protection. It does not show me everything you post in a Facebook and it's really smart about that. Um, but I like these, I like interest graphs better. You know, I'm interested in music. I wanna see more things about that. And Facebook's trying to go there, but it's stream-based. You're very collection-based, it's very different. Yes, and I think uh, frankly, Facebook owns your social graph, and Twitter is trying hard to own the interest graph, whereby the interest is just technology, blah, 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 blah. That's interesting you might say that, but it's not true in practice well, because the noise level is so high. Well, but exactly. That's what I was going to get to. The challenge with the interest yeah. graph, as in if you're just interested in tech, is you will get either a lot of noise or we will apply very few algorithms to surface you the most popular content, and then you will read the same article on Mashable and TechCrunch that yeah. you would have read by just going to Mashable and TechCrunch. And then, and then if you want to know what's the best thing happening in Egypt, you go to the New York Times and maybe Al Jazeera. And then if we use the most popular shared thing, by definition, it will be the most popular read to start with because we know that sh there's all these papers being published about how sharing and virality is the only determinant for it is not really quality of the content, but the number of people who read it from the first place yeah. because it's really a random walk. Or if it has a an image that is interesting. That's a whole different story. But aside from, or like a very like catchy title. But aside from that, really, it's about just how many, it's about popularity. Yeah. So the challenge with Twitter and Pound Discover is it will eventually be most popular content per category. Yeah. With Snippet, we believe in human curation. So I believe, look, I'm not trying to surface you the most important things about tech, because that will be the articles in Mashable and, and TechCrunch or others. I want to surf it. You are interested in what Rami has to say about Egypt. Yeah. And I, because I'm originally from Egypt, I actually read a very long tale of content. I read a lot of sites that the average user in the States would not read. And you're interesting in that perspective. Yeah. So you follow my collection in Egypt. Yeah. And then you will get very interesting content, much more interesting than anything else. I really believe that human curation is way more powerful than machine curation. And a real interest graph is one where you are following the interests of particular tastemakers, not just generic tech and entrepreneurship. So I think it, what, what's interesting about the database you're building is uh, Mark Zuckerberg's media engine, F Facebook is a, a media engine really. And it brings you media based on who you are. And the more it knows about you, the better it can serve you, right? If it knows you like the New York Jets, yes. it's gonna bring you media about the New York Jets, right? If, you, if it knows you like uh, Rolling Stones, it's gonna bring you media about the Rolling Stones. And people haven't keyed in on this yet because they, most people think about Facebook as being for family and friends and photos. They don't understand he's building a media engine and he needs more data about us. This is why he did likes, right? So we're clicking like on things. We're telling the engine what we like, who we are, what we like, what we want to see more of. And um, your engine goes way beyond the like. It, it, it really, it, when I use it, I'm telling your engine who am I, right? What do I care about really deeply? Um, 
that's going to be a valuable database, I think, to sell to Facebook. Sort of like Instagram sold their database to Facebook, right? <laughs> uh, you know, if you start a company hoping to sell it, um, an, an acquisition is a is a great well, outcome sell and it, a horrible plan. License it or yeah. or well, do an we, open we, graph. To, and, it, to be honest, you know. it's a. Uh, I I love Facebook. I love Facebook because there was always emphasis on product and on doing the one thing that mattered. Um, and they were not afraid of making mistakes. I love a company that screwed up, you know, launched something that totally fails, but it, because they're trying. Um, but I think Facebook is, um, I think there is a need for a new platform. Yeah. I think it, uh, there is a need for a new platform beyond Facebook. Uh, one where p there is a lot of friend fatigue. Uh, yeah. One that is really focused just on, on that sharing and discovering of other people who share your interests who may be totally strangers. I think overlaying subscribers on top of friends dilutes a product. You yeah. know, every, every once in a while, evolution takes its effect in an existing product. It's going to be very hard for it to morph to uh, address something new. Absolutely true. And uh, that's where I think Snippet really has an amazing chance and has been doing great, standing on its own, acquiring very engaged users um, who are addicted to the site. Very cool. Um, tell me just a little bit about the company. How is it funded? We were, um, so we were just uh, started uh, in late last year, in middle of last year. Yeah. We're founded by uh, Coastal Ventures, uh, True Ventures, uh, CRV, and Ron Conway. Very cool, very, very smart people. They so are, they are all, they've been all amazing. So they see, the, they're, they're hoping that there, this new platform does exist, <laughs> and yeah. that there is another thing coming after Facebook. So. Well, and I think they are uh, all very, very happy they made the investment. Very cool. And we're very happy they have as well. Where do I learn more about it? Snip.it. Very cool. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.